mamuj mu. and germs. Xavier here for Hum of the Earth. Signing in from Niche, Serbia's second city, which isn't actually the second biggest city in terms of population in Serbia. That would be Novi Sad in the north. But it has the name Serbia's second city because it is the biggest city in the southern half of the country. It has the second highest skyline after Belgrade. So the most skyscrapers and buildings. <clears throat> has a population of about 180,000 in the city proper and about 260,000 in the city's administrative area. Currently walking down uh, Tinker's Alley, which has some buildings, I think more so some that we saw earlier, uh, that date back to the 18th century <laughs> but niche has history that goes way further than that than that for a long time it's been kind of an, an important crossroad location between east and west So basically between kind of Asia and Europe. And a fun fact is that there have been three Roman Empire um, emperors who were born here in Niche. Including Constantine the Great, the first Christian emperor, and Constantius the Third, who are all born here. And this, in fact, was an important place for the uh, Roman Empire. In a building uh, in the east part of the city called Mediana, that I don't think we'll be visiting uh, today, is the location where uh, there were really important meetings that uh, divided uh, the empire, basically who would rule which parts of the empire. Such decisions uh, were made here. And Nish 
has been occupied by many empires since then. This monument here is the, a monument dedicated to the liberators of Nietzsche. And we'll talk about some of those uh, events that have liberated uh, Nietzsche from some empires that were not so desirable by the people living here through the course of this video. So let's now head to what is probably the most iconic part of the city. The city's fortress, which is one of the most well-preserved fortresses in the Balkans and in fact one of the oldest as well <clears throat> or at least with the oldest history when the Romans were conquering the Balkans they used this site here and had fortified it as a base of operations And then the same, same site was also used by the Byzantine Empire. And other empires after that. But the version that we see today, so the bricks that are still here, are from the Ottoman Empire. who were in and out of the city of Nish as they would come in, conquer the city and then maybe get uh, removed by the Habsburgs Habsburg monarchy empire or by uh, or by Serbs or by uh, Austrian forces. But not all the attempts to push back the Ottoman Empire were successful. One of the notable uh, attempts by uh, Serbian forces was in 1809 in the Battle of Segar. Which is notable because after the defeat of the Serbian troops, um, the Turkish troops severed the heads of the Serbian uh, soldiers and used them as construction material for a uh, tower a <laughs> for a tower that is uh, in the eastern part of the city aptly named uh, Skull Tower So this is a mosque that the 
Ottoman Empire built within the walls of the fortress. This was built in the early uh, 1500s and has been uh, maintained throughout the years because it is a uh, unique architectural uh, mosque in uh, Serbia. So Serbia liberated itself from the Ottoman Empire in in 1878 <laughs> following this uh, uprising the majority of the uh, Muslim population of Niche uh, suffered from um, persecution and, and violence. So many of them, the majority of them fled uh, to either Kosovo, Albania, or uh, what is now called North Macedonia, specifically the city of Skopje. During the First Balkan War, Niš was the principal headquarters for the Serbian army who was fighting, still fighting against the Ottoman Empire. And then for World War I, Niš was the wartime capital of the country. It was hosting the government and the National Assembly until 1915 when the city was ceded to Bulgaria. During World War I, the Niche Fortress was still being used, but this time by the Bulgarian forces who were using it for military defense, as well as the imprisonment of captured enemy forces. After World War I, the city of Nice, Nice flourished. There was the con construction of several schools, a library, a printing press, a brewery, etc. Everything that one would need for a modern society and for a economy to grow. And it did. Until World War II. This is the Niche concentration camp. One of the few remaining in Europe that has been preserved and is mostly intact. So in front of us here are the German guardhouse and kitchen and bathroom for the German soldiers who had overtaken what was once a Serbian military building. This is the building where uh, the prisoners were kept. Uh, prisoners being people who are either Jewish or were um, just opposing the authority of the 
uh, Axis powers or were seen as being uh, patriots in any way. So this were essentially where they would sleep, just on uh, straw here on the ground. on the wall here their names would be inscribed obviously these were bad living conditions it was a really terrible thing to be kept here here we have a list of uh, a group of people who on February 12, 1942, attempted uh, an escape. And I'm emphasizing how bad the conditions were because um, attempting an escape from the camp was somewhat of a suicide mission. Given that uh, there were guard towers that were armored with uh, guns uh, to meet anyone who would attempt to escape. But on that cold February day, 142 of the prisoners decided to make a run for it. They had already strategized, planned for the ideal time with the best chance of making it through and managed to push over the barbed wire here and make a run for the wall. And as you can see, uh, they were shot at trying to get over the wall. Um, since the wall is pretty high, they were probably uh, helping each other over and given that they were taking time there um, 42 out, out of the 142 uh, were shot and killed and so this area here is kind of a memorial um, to those people So after prisoners were sorted out downstairs where you saw the hay, this is where they would be sent to these small, dark, prison-like cells. So this concentration camp uh, was only a temporary residence for um, the prisoners here. They were here while um, it was decided where they would be sent to next. So they would get sent to larger concentration camps usually uh, northern up either in um, like Poland or Germany or even Norway where they would work in factories um, and I say work I mean kind of be slaves uh, in factories um, creating ammunition and weapons for the German military. Or if the work camps were full, they might be sent to a death camp where they would be um, killed. 
But not all that were prisoners here were sent um, to other camps further north in Europe. It's estimated that 10 to 15,000 of the people who were held here were sent to Bubanj Hill. This is Bubanj Hill, where the prisoners were taken from the concentration camp, uh, made to dig a mass grave, line up in front of it, blindfolded, executed. And then the next group of people had to take the dead who had just been shot, put them in the grave, and then line up themselves. It's estimated that between 10 to 15,000 people were executed here on Bubanj Hill, which is now a memorial park. With three massive fists that represent people standing against the evil that was happening at the time. In 1944, with the help of an ex-enemy, Bulgaria, Serbian rebels were able to repel the German occupation. At which point, uh, Serbia became part of Yugoslavia. During World War II, uh, Niš suffered from bombings. And then it did again during the <clears throat> Kosovo War, where it was bombed on 40, occasion, 40 occasions by the NATO uh, forces. I've talked about the NATO uh, bombings in other videos, other videos I've done in Serbia, but I never really detailed why, um, at least in great detail, why uh, these bombings occurred. So, prior to the beginning of the Kosovo War, there had been religious prosecution of the people in, in Kosovo, in that area, uh, there was a lot of uh, Muslims that I you know, talked about earlier, people fleeing Nish uh, to go to Kosovo, which is uh, which was part of uh, the Yugos Yugoslavia and Serbia in the southwestern uh, part of Serbia a part that a lot of Serbians still consider part of the country today and that's kind of internationally disputed but anyways um, so there was religious uh, uh, persecution and violence so Kosovo wanted to uh, which was a majority Muslim area wanted to leave uh, from Serbia and so Serbia sent troops there to let them know that uh, this was not happening and this led to a war. One in which that the international community kind of depending on their alliances was kind of split about uh, and the UN actually didn't really kind of uh, green light an intervention but the NATO without UN's approval decided that they were going to take action and kind of uh, pressure Serbia to uh, withdraw their troops from Kosovo 
uh, and they did this by um, basically bombing uh, the country, various political buildings, bridges, uh, oil refineries, um, military outposts, etc. But obviously when you're bombing a uh, place, um, it's not super precise. So there's still a lot of civilian casualties that you know weren't in the military or weren't related in, in uh, to politics in any way that were uh, unfortunately caught, caught in the crossfire. Uh, in Niche specifically, there were uh, 56 civilian casualties uh, due to the NATO bombings. Thankfully, things have been relatively calm since then. And Niche is doing pretty well. <clears throat> and part of that success is because it's lo located at an important intersection of a European highway which connects Asia to Europe as well as a railway that does the same. And given that Nish uh, is the second, is the biggest city in southern Serbia, it has an international airport as well, and it's the administrative cultural, industrial, commercial, uh, kind of de facto capital uh, of southern Serbia. So I hope you enjoyed this city tour and history of Niš. I have some other videos of cities in Ser southern Serbia, including Krušovac, where I was last, and a little bit further north of that, uh, Kragujevac, which was twice the former capital of Serbia. And I've also made videos of the cities in northern Serbia, such as Subotica, Novi Sad, and of course the capital, Belgrade. Also made a longer video called Journey Through Southern Serbia, where I bicycled through this half of the country, which is the more mountainous half, so you can see uh, what the landscapes look like, as well as what rural sorry, rural uh, southern Serbia looks like. And I also have a similar video called Journey Through Northern Serbia, where I bicycled through that half of the country. And I was lucky enough to experience uh, some of Serbia's hospitality, where I was lucky enough to be, to make some new friends and be uh, brought to their small Serbian village and see what life is like in small town Serbia and that was a pretty cool experience so in that video you can see what Serbian people are like so I was here as part of a larger journey bicycle, bicycling through central and eastern Europe and before that, I bicycled from Cape Town, South Africa, all the way to Nairobi, Kenya. So bicycling through half of Africa. And then, and before that, I bicycled from Canada, where I'm from, all the way to Southern Patagonia in Argentina. And all those videos are available on this same YouTube channel hum of the earth.
And if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I went and everything that I got to see and do, I have that available over on my website, followthehumofthearth.com. where you can click on the different locations and see the various blog posts and videos that I've made of these places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures, once again bicycling through Central and Eastern Europe, you can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button below the video and clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. All right, so I think that's gonna do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.